Hey, Jeff. Hey, Eric. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Where are we? We are in Atlanta. We've been here now for three days. We got another two. Then we go back home for five, and then we're back here for five. Oh, my God. I really, I woke up. And then up, after that, yeah. we're supposed to go to Chicago. I woke up yesterday, I think, and I was like, I don't know where I am. I think Los Angeles. I, I've been very confused. Atlanta, Georgia, though, what a welcome. It's been awesome to run around. We're down here for the Red Bull Music Festival. Mm -hmm. We've been going to a lot of events. Um, Gunnar Stahl had a gallery opening. Denzel Curry and Joey Badass had this this wrestling concert thing last night where they went like song for song and like were actually in a real wrestling ring. Yes. We've gone to a bunch of things. We saw a little brother the other day. You saw Rory from the Joe Budden podcast. We did see Rory from the Joe and Budden podcast. And of Duce Palooza. That is true. We saw Chris Stiles of Duce Palooza. Yeah. It's been it's been an awesome stay down here in, in Atlanta or LA, wherever we are. Wherever we are, it's great. I love Atlanta for so many reasons, but uh, we have this great support down here a lot of people really fuck with us and it's been cool to run into a lot of people who are like yo i listen to you all the time or i recognize your voice or it's you guys but my favorite comment was last night at the joey and denzel thing mm -hmm. when some guy tapped me on the shoulder and he goes yo my mom fucks with your shit <laughs> <laughs> i was like you know what that's a, that's a pretty great one that's really good also really good was when we were back in new york we were doing this uh, live show with the First Class Breakfast. Shout out to those guys. Uh, Reggie and Torian and, and the whole crew. Yeah. And uh, we're waiting in the wings to like get on stage. Yeah. Because they were doing uh, this, this other segment before they got into the real meat of the conversation, which was going to be a dissection of Future's DS2 and whether or not that was a, a classic. Yeah. So this girl comes up to you and we are basically the only two white guys in the room and yep. she goes... Do you own this place? What a what a compliment. Look we're, at how you were dressed. I know, exactly. You we're not exactly in place. suits. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's funny. She said that, and then when I laughed and laughed and laughed, she goes, uh, are you guys here to do the lighting? <laughs> are you bartender? I mean, she went through, honestly, about a dozen different <laughs> occupations, and then I was like, uh, no, we're... Uh, we're here to talk about about this future album and whether it's a classic or not. By the way, shout out to those guys. It was a great conversation. Shout out to everyone who was in the building for that. Mm -hmm. um, people were very passionate about whether this was a classic or not. I feel like our job was to, you know, bring some laughs. And I spent most of my time just making fun of Russell Wilson. Yeah. That was my big takeaway from Future's DS2 album. Yeah, but you did say you were also on Team Sierra. I Well, I, I wanted to bring the other side of things, you know? You were just on every side of things. I, <laughs> I was there to have a good time and just make sure that everyone was having a good time because we own the place. Yeah. And Jeff, one more thing before we get into who's on the podcast today. We're down here in Atlanta. And uh, we're here till Wednesday, as you said. Mm -hmm. But... In an effort to get back home, mm. we've done something special. And this is the first time we've ever done it. We have a clearance sale at itstherealcom slash shop. We are getting all of our stuff out of our apartment so that we can make it back home. Guys, help us get back home. Go to itstherealcom slash shop. Go pick up some t-shirts, which have been discounted up to... 40% off. Wait, up to 40% off? I know, I know. If you were like, you know what? I was waiting for you guys to get to like 30. We've superseded that. Yeah, we've surpassed that. 40% off on some items there. They're great t-shirts. They are really comfortable. Mm -hmm. we've, I'm wearing one right now, actually. I'm wearing the uh, third favorite podcast t-shirt as we speak. But it's so much more worth it when it's 40% cheaper. 40% cheaper. Go to itstherealcom slash shop, get yourself one, get a friend one, and get us back to New York City. Honestly, okay, here's a, here's a special deal. We made this deal a few weeks ago. Okay. It's still in place. Yeah. If you buy 200 t-shirts, mm -hmm. we'll throw in one for free. <laughs> Once again. Yeah, you buy 200 t-shirts. In, in case you're like driving along and you crashed because <laughs> it's such a shocking offer. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, let's just repeat what Jeff said. Slow your roll, pull over... <laughs> Listen Listen to the words I'm saying. Very carefully. This is real. This is a real offer. Yeah. If you buy 200 t-shirts from us, we'll throw in an extra for free. <laughs> you just, just 200 down. Yeah. We throw in one. <laughs> you want to know what? We'll, we'll pay for shipping. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, it's How's the real, that? It's that? the real dot com slash shop is where you can go get that great offer. But forty mm-hmm. percent off for for t shirts at it's the real dot com slash shop. Jeff, who's on the podcast today? On the podcast today is West Side Gun. West Side Gun, Western New York's own. Can you believe Griselda's own? Can you believe I say Rock Nation and Shady Records? Can you believe West Side Gun? This is the guy that everyone's been asking for. Everyone. They said, who hey, has asked me we, every single day? We don't need Puffy. No. We don't need Two Chains. Nope. We don't need Ti. We need Griselda, and guess what? We finally got West Side Gun of Griselda. And West Side Gun is the the power behind that label. He yep. is he is the brains, and as he says, the mastermind mm-hmm. behind this movement. Wait, if he's the brains, who do you think is the looks? Me. <laughs> uh, you're the heart, uh-huh. and then uh, and then there's Benny, and there's Conway. But anyway, yeah. West Side Gun came through to tell his, as he says, the the story that's more incredible than Eminem and Fifty Cent. That is what he said. Mm-hmm. He said it would be a bigger movie, and maybe there's a movie in store. But we get into Buffalo. We get into why he signed the Rock Nation deal. We get into how he signed the Rock Nation deal. We get into the shady records deal, but it's also like we get into the wrestling at the end. Of, we well, we are wrestleheads, <laughs> big big wrestleheads. Last night, yeah, <laughs> we were at a wrestlehead event. Yeah, I was booing the Mark Jeff. I heard you say to our friend Jinx, mm-hmm. "You go, I think I like this stuff now." <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to just say at the end of the interview, Westside was about to leave our apartment. And that's what people do. He stopped by the door and he turned around and he said, listen, I just really appreciate you guys asking different questions and like really trying to dig deep into these things because these stories matter. Yeah. And so we appreciate that, that he was able to stop by and that we were able to have like a real conversation with him. Yeah. I listen And and to tell his story the way it's meant to be told. So he's a, he's a fascinating guy. I think there's so much more to him, obviously than just the music. Mm hmm. You know, than just the merch. It's, it's real shit. It is real shit. He's a real one. Shout out to West Side Gun. Shout out to our guy Derek who made it happen. Shout out to everybody over at Griselda, Rock Nation, Shady. We really appreciate you. Shout all. out to Cam uh, from Duce Palooza for connecting us to Derek in the first place. Yep. Shout out to all those guys. Shout out to you guys for. Yo, what up? It's Derek, aka Moving Bricks, aka the Big Bad Wolf. Yo, what up? It's Jeff, aka Conway the Human Serviette, aka Doo 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 Doo. Yo, <laughs> he finally got himself the new king of New York. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> yeah, this is your third favorite podcast, the Waste of Time with the Real. <laughs> Westside Gun, what's happening? Just living, man, enjoying life, you know what I'm saying? Enjoying taking over shit. Just, just, you know. Doing what we doing, man. Just doing what we gotta do for the culture. Well, listen, uh, as I told you when you walked in, there are so many people that are asked for to be on this podcast, but no one, no one has the internet been more excited to sit down in this chair than you. So thank you so much for coming oh, through. Man, I, we need to have one of those things, you know, you hit the button and just applause. <laughs> oh, I thought you like that. Just clap for myself. <laughs> A oh, one time, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like drink champs, like, yeah. yeah. Man, man, man. <laughs> man, we do we have a lot to talk about. But congratulations on the new project. Thank do you, you feel like people, if they find you today, do you feel like because you've been around for a long time, yeah. are they late to getting to know you? Do Very you, late. Yeah, <laughs> but it's all good because um, you know I built my shit organically. So, you know, I don't, I'm not, a, I don't get upset of like if people don't know right now, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, okay, you know what I mean? Once you get it, you, it's over, you know what I'm saying? You got it. So, I mean, it's all good, man. You know what I mean? And just me continually, you know, making projects, it's going to get people to come around eventually, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's all good. But I mean, be personally, you know, people, I think at least two, two, three years late. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, I'm saying? what was your phone looking like when the Rock Nation announcement came through? Man, you know, I had about five extra kids, <laughs> you know, 30 extra cousins, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Teachers, that, teachers that I never even, I didn't even go to their school, <laughs> so they taught me, you know what I'm saying? But oh. nah, you know, it's just, it, it was a lot of love, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, you know, that, that, that move was, 
a few years in the making actually people thought you know that just happened but that deal was actually presented even before the the shady deal is that right yeah 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 that was that was like two two and a half years in the making what kept it like from actually like happening i'm a mastermind man it's not all it's see you know i don't rush to do nothing you know what i'm saying apparently not I don't I don't rush to do nothing. It's it's always about timing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a guy that just do it just because it's there. You know what I'm saying? I respect everybody, you know what I'm saying? And if it's meant to be, it'll happen. What's the first time you sort of cross paths with hip hop? Hip hop the person. Yeah, yeah. Came not hip hop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah. <laughs> I came out the pussy with a box. You know what I'm saying? But um now nah, hip hop is wild because he used to always be at Alchemist's house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when I'm at Alchemist's house, you know, Hopper be there and shit and making beats and just chilling with the homies and all of that. It's like a rap camp over there. Like the people who would just come through at any time, right? 100%, yeah. 100%. 100%. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got to be you got to be on your game to just be over there and, and, and getting production and building with us because if not, you just... You're gonna be out of place, but if you're not even on that type of caliber, you're not even over there anyway. So, yo, how how trippy is it for you that like you would download when you were first starting? You would download Alchemist beats, instrumentals, yeah, and now you end up at his crib and he's making them. Yeah, I mean, that's how it is for everything I'm doing right now. Like, it's just not Alchemist; it's everything. Like, oh shit, I used to listen to them. Now they saying I'm their favorite or. Damn, I used to, you know, talk about their clothes. Now they giving me boxes. It's like that for everybody. But I mean, as far as Alchemist, it was like that was meant to be. You know what I'm saying? Alchemist is is the fifth member of Grizel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like he he's he's a brother. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But um, it's crazy. Like I said, it's all it's all surreal, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just enjoying it, man. It, I, I live it in real time, so it don't even feel like. You know what I mean? It might look crazy from the outside, but to me, it's just like, it's just life now. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. you know, shout out to Alchemist. Big shout out to Alchemist. So we first found out about you guys um, from our friend Combat Jack. Um, we were riding rest around. Peace, rest yeah, rest yeah. in peace yeah. to Reggie. We were riding around Brooklyn um, years back. Um, maybe maybe you guys had just done his podcast and we were re-listening this morning too just to like hear what that I was like. I think it like. was right before you guys did the podcast. Yeah. yeah, and so it was in that time and he was like, yo, I'm listening to these guys from upstate yeah. and he's like, you should really be on them. What was the first time like meeting Reggie like and, and what did his co-sign, you know, a guy from down here as deep in the game as he was, what did that mean to you guys? See, it meant a lot because at that time, look how long ago that was, so he he seen something then like how i was saying like people late he seen it then you yeah. know what i'm saying so he was on point and um you know just the respect like just going on you know combat jack show was was a big deal and like i said at that time a lot of people still didn't know who we were so it was just like yo this shit is huge and man he paying attention and and, and the day we met him it was all love and we became friends ever since then like he was there when i did um Part four, mm. you know, he did an interlude, and him and A King came mm-hmm. over to the house. I'm talking two, three in the morning, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm just sitting in there, man, smoking back to back and kicking in and just vibing. And he was actually he actually heard, um, you know, part four before anybody. Wow, you know what I'm saying, and, and he was just a big fan. Like right now, in my studio, I have a, a painting next to my mic. You know what I'm saying? A combat jack. Wow, a big joke. that's love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to go back to to the beginning. Mm-hmm. Where are you originally from? Buffalo, man. Yeah, East, but what East part? Side, yeah, Central Park, Worcester, twenty three. You know what I'm saying? So it's if people like, only know, you know, Ralph Wilson Stadium, if people only know Buffalo Wings, it's not even in Buffalo. If people Damn. only know, <laughs> if people talk only, about it, yeah. <laughs> if people only know like I ninety or something like that, or how yeah. close it is to, you know, it's not close at all. <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> yeah. None of that, man. Yeah. You know, Buffalo is, you know, it's a dangerous city. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's actually more dangerous than New York City for the simple fact it's so small and everybody know each other. Everybody go to this, like, we only have one mall. Mm. So if you're getting some clothes, you got to go to the same stores. Everybody hopping out the stores, getting duchess where they sit guys at the same shit. 
You go on a party, everybody at the same party. So it's like, it's, it's nowhere to hide, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's that's dangerous. Like, I could see somebody right now in New York City, never see him again in my life, and we both could live three streets from each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the difference. But in Buffalo, it's like, hey, what's Westside Gun having a party Friday? Everybody from every hood gonna be at that party. So mm-hmm. it's just it's just different. It's dangerous, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Who did you look up to as a as a young guy? Uh, my uncle Bacon. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to him too. You know what I mean? Because you know, rest in. I mean, <clears throat> you know, Bacon was like a. Uh, you know, he was just a hustler, man. He was a natural, and um, you know, I got to see that firsthand. I got to see money early. I got to see you know what I'm saying drugs early. I got to see girls early. I got to see fly clothes, fly cars early. You know, it's just like a. You know, when it comes to like a street figure, that was him. Like he had, you know, our part of of, of the neighborhood on Smash, and you know what I mean him and his crew, they did their thing. And you know, I was his nephew. You know what I mean? Lived in the same house, and um, you know, hip hop, all of that, just early. Like I, I I was able to see that. So were you ahead of all of your friends like at that level? Yeah. Because like because you had access to Bacon in his house. Yeah, I mean, I could just say, like, I just was always a hustler. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was the dude who, like, even as a kid, when everybody, like, collected sports cars, I was the guy that sold you the packs of the cars. Mm. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) So, um, you know, early I just knew, like, yo, I need to go out to this flea market on wall and go get the box of, you know what I'm saying, packs of cars, and I'm going to come back to school, sell the packs. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had, like... It, you know, back then, basketball jerseys and all that was popping, football jerseys. And I was just, like, at a young age then, in, like, fifth grade, I used to go, you know what I mean, have my people drive me out to a spot. Because what happened was they used to come with, like, a regular. It might be something so small on the jersey, you don't even know that's <laughs> nothing wrong with it at all. And um, I used to go out there and buy the jersey for 15. <laughs> Say if a jersey really cost 50 in the store, I go out there, buy for fifteen, come back to school the next day, sell them for thirty. Yeah. So you rather spend thirty than fifty, especially you a kid. But I was doubling up even yeah. then. Like it was just like I always had the ment you know what I mean, the mentality mm-hmm. of, of getting money, making moves, you know. Was that with the with the idea of moving out? Like you didn't wanna No, nah, this was, I was a kid just making money. Like You, you just know, wanted to get money to get money. Yeah, yeah. My uncle Bacon, he got killed when I was in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. I was only, you know, fourteen years old when he got killed. So like What did that do to you? Uh I mean, I you know, I of course I was hurt, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he got shot by one of his best friends, the same mm-hmm. guy who came over every day. So mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But I mean I, I can't say well I, I can't say it made me stronger you know what I'm saying but I, I just I just took that like damn like the streets is cold you know what I mean but at the same time you know when you from east side Buffalo like you see it all the time so it's unfortunate you know what I mean because you know since bacon I done probably lost 20 30 people like right you know yeah. what I'm saying so it's like you know you just gotta keep moving man growing up in, in listen I mean Buffalo is a city but it's it's like you said, like a small place where you're going to run into everybody you know and they'll run into you. Mm-hmm. Did you think of ever leaving? Did you want to just be the king of, you know, Western New York? Or were you like, yo, you know, there's more to life than just Buffalo and surrounding areas? Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. I always thought ahead. You know what I'm saying? I always thought ahead. Um, you know, I got in a little trouble after my sophomore year. You know what I'm saying? And I had went to... Uh, Atlanta for the summertime and you know my kid's mom you know we was young I was vibing with her we lived next door to each other and um that's why we had two kids early but mm-hmm. because she lived next door yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you know, <laughs> open up the door and get pussy <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, that's how it was but Atlanta's different than Buffalo yeah 100% yeah. so you know you gotta think when I go down here still at this age I was already fly I already had the chains on and you know already had the fly clothes and shit then and um so I like I said I got into some problems I went down there for the summer and I told Benny and Sheen gonna come cause I stayed with one aunt and they went and stayed with my other aunt and um 
so we was there for the summer and shit was just live. Like I went, she was in summer school, so I, you know I used to walk up to the school with her and I'd be like, "Damn, this y'all school? <laughs> they serve a Chick Fil A and shit." <laughs> and it was just dope. And I'm just like, and it yo. wasn't a school; it was a mall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, yo, we should we should move out here. You know what I'm saying? So I talked to them. I talked to my aunt. I talked to my other aunt, and we all stayed there. You know what I'm saying? You were how old? This was. This had to be like 16 Man Yeah this was like 16 You know what I'm saying I was just like um, It was it was crazy Because the Yin Yang Twins Lived right behind me back What? Then too. Real talk And this is when they was popping Because I used to mess with The same girl One of them messed with <laughs> What? You know, yeah, real talk. This was this was like early, w- like whisper, like fucking yeah, like era. This, this was like yeah, whisper like fucking era. Boring, yeah, you know, starting to you know get popping and shit. You know do you are, do you have any problems with the Yang twins? Like, are we good? Of course, man. <laughs> okay, I, I haven't seen them since. You know what I mean? All machine, love to the Yang twins. Yeah. Machine gun beat up one of their homies, but that was. <laughs> It's neither here nor there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a long time. Ago. Yeah, <laughs> Man, it was it was funny. Cause Sheen Gun was a protector, and one of the dudes said something crazy about the chick, mm. and just Sheen Gun just he demolished him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was funny. Like we laughed when he was doing it, and it was just that was you know we was kids. You know what I'm saying? But you know that's what helped me too. Just just expanding, like moving to Atlanta for that year and a half. It was just like. Damn, I, I seen more fashion like things that in Buffalo didn't have because you don't know. You know yeah. what I mean? And um, did people respect your fashion down there? Because like Buffalo is a yeah. different city. You know, it's a different different aesthetic. All that. Yeah, yeah it was crazy because the first day of school, you know how hot Atlanta is in the summertime. You know, yeah, they start yeah. school in August. First day of school, I'm never gonna forget. I had a Boston Bruins hockey jersey. Yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tim. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> they looking at me like, yo, it's fucking rainy outside. Like you got on Tim's in a fucking Boston Bruins jersey. You know what I'm saying? But it was just, and you know that was the baggy era too. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, yo, who is this dude? But it, you know, it was dope because like. You know, I, like I said, I always moved different. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I got in there, of course, I was popular. I was a junior, you know what I'm saying? And then I started messing with, like, one of the prettiest chicks in the school, which was a senior. Hmm. And her family was rich, so she driving, you know, Jeep Wranglers and Infinities and all type of shit to school. So I'm riding with her and, you know, going where, back and forth with her and my baby mom and all yeah. that shit. You know, it was just, it was just fun times. You know Did you get saying? your driver's license down there? My first time, nah, nope. That was back nope. up in Buffalo? Yeah. yeah, because like, you know, we, we stayed there for like a year and a half. The thing is, I didn't really need my license when I was in the A. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We were still kids riding on the murder and mm. doing all of that shit. So I really wasn't even, honestly, I really wasn't thinking about driving. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And um, when I went back to Buffalo, you know what I'm saying? My grandmother, she had moved into like kind of like a suburb outside of Buffalo called Tonawanda. So, you know, because I wasn't going to graduate in high school if I would have stayed in Atlanta. That was the thing. Mm. Because at my senior year, you know, because, you know, we had the two-year plan, you know, me, me, Sheen, Gun, Benny, and we were just going to stay there for the two years. Um, They they stayed, you know what I'm saying? But like, like I said, I wasn't going to graduate at all. And um, I had to go back because the credits was different. You know, you graduate by credits. So how Atlanta school was the first semester from like August to, you know, Christmas break or whatever, you get four credits. And then the second half, you get four credits. So I got enough credits from the four first ones. But the last four, I was just... I didn't even care about school no more. It was really let me just come to school so you can see my outfit. Yeah. Like, that's how I got. Like, I come to school during lunch, don't even check in. Or I come to school in gym. Right. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. And it, it, I didn't even, honestly, I didn't even care anymore. And um, I'm like, damn, I got a great, you know, because she just had the baby. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. It was now just you got to like, provide. Yeah. It yeah. was like, damn, I got a whole kid. Let me let me finish school. So the by the way, a whole kid is way better than a half kid. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. And you know, I like I said, I already had a kid, so it was just like, damn, I got I got to finish. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to go to school for fashion, mm. so I'm like, that's the only way this is gonna happen if I finish school. And um, I called my grandmother. We figured it out. I'm like, yo, Grams, if I come back, 
already got enough credits. I don't even got to damn go to school no more. And shit, I went back. She was staying out there and um, went, signed up for school. I didn't even have one class. When I graduated, the principal even looked at me like, who is this? <laughs> because it was on the outskirts. It, it was maybe four black people that even graduated in the whole class. It was Man. like one of those type of schools. Right. Yeah. So when I walk, when I walk on stage, you know what I mean? I got a, I had a platinum grill from Eddie, braids, Versace glasses and shit. And you know, this is still. Did you have the robe? Era. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you yeah. freak it? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I yeah. <laughs> I, did. I did. I did. You know what I'm saying? But you know, like I'm saying, I was just, you know, you don't, you never seen this dude in your school ever. You're right. Like yeah. I said, back then I had braids and I had the fucking, I had the platinum grill, but I had the, uh, remember the fangs like Wu Tang? Oh, yeah. Had. Yeah. So I had the fangs and I had the diamonds in them and shit. It's so crazy how you look like the Yin Yang twins. I <laughs> know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for real. So you for cross real. that stage, you get your diploma, and then what's the, what's the move? Yeah, they was just like, yo, it's, I mean, who is this dude? You know what I'm saying? And that was it because it was over. School was already done. But I didn't even have a class. Like they, you know, they said like if I ever wanted to go to gym or <laughs> lunch or something, I could because I still had to go every morning to homeroom and check check in. in. Yeah. yeah, I had to do that. So they was just like, if you want to stay. You know, go to gym or, you know, then go to lunch later, whatever. You know, you could just hang out in the library, whatever you want to do. <clears throat> you know, you good. So, you know, some days I'll chill in the library just to meet a few people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A little, you know, a little shit like that. But for the majority, you know, I really wasn't even on it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I started hustling again. And it was just like, you know. The whole fashion school thing that just never even entered the equation? Actually, I got accepted. Um, to the school It was just expensive as yeah. hell You know what I'm saying Like fashion school Was very expensive And there was a school Called Barter College Down in um, Phipps Plaza You know Atlanta has a Lenox Mall And Phipps Plaza Yep And um, You know I got accepted Went You know Did everything And it was just so expensive And you know no None of my family Was getting that loan They really just wasn't You know what I'm saying And it was just like Alright well that's out the window, but at least I have my high school. At least I got to walk across the stage and get that accomplished because nobody else did out my whole crew. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was the only one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, that I got that under my belt, but you know what I'm saying? It, you know, the school thing, I wish it would have happened because, like, I even want to go now because mm. it's just things I just still want to learn. You know what I mean? Because I've been designing, man. We was wearing my shit in eighth grade. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, How are you doing I was, that? I just go to the screen. Like I said, I was ahead of my time, bro. I was crazy because shout out to my homie Victor. We was just talking about it the other day because he still, to this day, do photography for me, do everything. But this, I was the best man at his wedding and everything. We started together in fifth grade. I come up with the storyline. He had draw it. We was like 10 years old, bro, like selling comics then. And when we got to, like I said, I was doing the jerseys, doing the clothes, all that, where, you know, being fly. And I was just like, yo, I come up with an idea, he had draw. And even then, like I said, at 13, 14 years old, I'm literally looking in the phone book, yo, screen printing places, asking them, like, what's the minimum? Hmm. Oh, 24, I go get 24, switch up the colors a couple times. And, you know, family and friends was wearing it even when I was 14. Mm, wow. After high school, when you don't go into, you know, college to mm -hmm. study fashion, mm -hmm. you got to get back to the streets. Mm -hmm. Where are you? You in Atlanta or you Buffalo. in Buffalo? Okay. Yeah, I'm back in Buffalo. Did you, you know feel like saying? your back was against the wall and this was just, you know, I know what to do and like this is just the easiest way to go get it? Yeah, that's yeah. what it really was. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, I got a hustler's mentality. You know what I mean? Spirit in Atlanta, the money wasn't there like that. You know, Atlanta, the way it's built, the way it's just not like it is in Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I had my baby moms, you know, come to Buffalo to try to live with me. Hmm. You got to think, though, she was two grades younger than me. So when I graduated. She's still in school. Yeah. She now, she would have to, you know, literally go to school from my house and at. 16 years old yeah you know what i'm saying but um you know she really wasn't feeling it because i really wasn't home like that you know what i'm saying i'm i'm hustling yeah you know but I mean? also i mean like she's away from her family she's exactly. away from everything that she knows exactly. she's up in buffalo, buffalo with different. like yeah, yeah, yeah. zero degree weather she don't know 
a soul. Right. Yeah. Then I'm gone majority of the day. And then, you know, her mom is in her ear like, you need to just come back here. So she ended up going back because she tried when I graduated, you know, that was the end of the uh, the school year. So yeah. she was done. You know, they get out before us. So she was already there. So when I graduated, um, in her mind, she was there living. You know, we was about to, you know, we was kids, but we about to just live this life together. Yeah. And um, once she seen like how I move in Buffalo compared mm-hmm. to just the same guy that I was with in Atlanta, <laughs> it was it was apples and oranges. Yeah, yeah. she couldn't handle the the Buffalo West Side. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. it was just like. Yeah, if you can't handle me at my Buffalo, you don't deserve <laughs> me at my Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was just like that. And, you know, at the time, you know, of course, you know, we could talk about it now. But, you know, even at that time, you know, I was I was in the streets. You know, what yeah. I'm I was getting money. So she ended up going back. So when she ended up going back at the time, uh, Southwest then was air train. You know what I mean? Yeah. Flights. And all you had to do from 18 to 22, you could fly anywhere, but it, the ticket was only like $55. It was Whoa. it was designed for college students. Yeah. So And you were like a college student, yeah. you know, age. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, because they never asked for your college ID. It mm-hmm. just needed to be between 18 and 22. Perfect. Yeah. So it was just like, okay, you could go back to Atlanta. I fly to you every week. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing. Week yeah. Because I'm making money. If right. I even got to come there every week just to see my kids get some clothes because at the time you know like i said buffalo everybody shop at the same shit yeah but i was exposed to the malls and stores and different brands in atlanta the, oh you come the back looking shit. yeah yeah, yeah. So different like, yeah i'm wearing iceberg and gucci and shit because i could go to i had access when i when i fly to atlanta and um so, so I was always ahead of like what everybody else was doing yeah you know what I'm so if you're moving around in the streets isn't it sort of like the opposite to look flashy and just be out there and like shine? Nah, <laughs> nah. You know what I mean? If you if you look at the, you know, you got to think, man. We, we when you when you look at hood stars, they all got the big chains on the cars, the flashy shit. You know that that just comes with the lifestyle. It's actually like culture. It's just the culture of drug dealing. You know what I'm saying? Like you got some people that's low key, like a a, a freeway Rick Ross. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That could just wear old sweatshirt and jeans and some old kicks and you'll never know and he's the kingpin but when you just like a street dealer that's a part of the culture you're mm. not even thinking like that you're thinking about the woman the, the flash and the money the jewelry the cars the clothes you know what i'm saying and, and especially being from buffalo because it was just you know buffalo is poor too so it's like the more popular you are you got to show that shit you know what i'm saying so it's like the moment that that fall off you're nothing like mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like I was just always on it, and just you know, like I said, fly guy man, just coming from Buffalo and Atlanta, it was just that balance. You know what I mean? That I had different from everybody else. Yeah. So and I did that early. I was already a hustler, so that helped me. But it was just it, you know it just expanded, and like I said, me going back and forth. You know, I was always when I hustled, it was always supply and demand. Like it's crazy. Because I always thought this, bro, since like eight, nine years old. You know what I'm saying? And just maybe that was me watching bacon or whatever the case may be. But I just was, I always was on supply and demand. So it was like, okay, it went to from all of that to doing what I was doing to now me going back and forth to saying, damn, what do Buffalo need that? Atlanta has and what do you know what I mean Atlanta need that Buffalo has Chick-fil-A so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true but we have it now oh congratulations yeah yeah there you go finally yeah yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? finally <laughs> so what was your what was your biggest fear at that age you think I didn't not at all you think it was just like ignorance like yeah, yeah. yeah because that's the thing you know it wasn't even thinking about getting killed or nothing you know what I'm saying it was just living like the streets I used to walk around, the things I used to do then, I would never do. You couldn't even pay me to do that shit. Like, damn, I used to do that shit. <laughs> shit, crazy. Yeah. Like, even just riding around now, like, yo, damn. I, you know what I'm saying? But I guess just, you know, I don't know. Like like I said, when you in real, like I you know, mentioned earlier, like just when you in real time, you really just don't think. You just living. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And if, what happens, happens. And, and that's how it was. I, I Honestly, I didn't, I didn't fear getting locked up. I didn't fear about nothing. Do you, you know think people saying? feared for you? 
like your baby mother do you think maybe your mom like any relatives not not for real i don't think so honestly you know what i'm saying because that's the thing i always was out there so early mm -hmm. just moving and shaking like I, I never had a curfew you know how kids had curfews yeah you gotta be in by eight nine or when it's dark or i never had a curfew or nothing you know what i'm saying so it was just like I was 12 years old, 13 years old on a whole other side of town or downtown or coming in on a school night, 10 or 11 o'clock at night because see, my, I lived with my grandma and she, you know, was busting her ass, you know what I'm saying? And you know how them grandmas be just working doubles and doing all of that. That was my grandmother. So, you know, from the, when I wake up to go to school, I didn't see her because she sleep. But when I come home from school, I still don't see her because she had work. So you're saying so, nobody had time to worry about you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because, like, the more that they you're talking about it. you being, like, on, like, the, the east side or the west side, like, I'm like, no, I should have been worried about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, she wasn't there to really see. She working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So long as I check in with her, she don't know what yeah. I'm doing. She yeah. Know yeah. I'm on the other side doing this, doing that, right. doing this, doing that. You're still she alive. Even, yeah, yeah. She's not even thinking about that, so... You know, that's just how it was, you know what I mean? And, you know, at that time, you know, like, I don't even, still to this day, I don't even talk about my pops, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. but he wasn't there, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, my mom, she was in the streets, you know what I'm saying? My mom was in the streets heavy, mm. you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, doing all the shit she was doing. So it was just like, you know, them was, them was wild days. And, you know, Benny and Sheen Gun, you know, and, and, and Conway mom, you know what I'm saying? Like, they was all, you know, when you from East Side Buffalo, you know what I mean, either, you know, you had the story of, you know, your mom's on drugs. Well, you know, we came from the crack era, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, you know, that affected all of us, you know what I'm saying? Because we got to, all, everybody in my whole crew got to experience it firsthand, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the, the bad way, you know what I mean? So so at your the mothers wasn't there to even yeah. take care of us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't have the mother to take care of you and you don't have a father to take care of you and you stand with an aunt or you stand with a, a grandmother and they doing what they gotta do to just still try to provide for you, they like I said, you just you just out there. You know what I'm saying? So that was that's how we grew up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We we took care of ourselves for real for real, for a long time so we grew up early like you know what i mean what was your family breakdown like explain that to me so like um so your your brother is conway mm -hmm. and sheen gun is my first cousin which is benny's brother mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so you know you know my mom and their mom is first cousins you know what i mean my grandma who i raised me and their grandma came out the same pussy you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying mm -hmm. like so, you know, our whole life, like, growing up, I slept in the same bed as Benny. Pause. You know right. what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, we was kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The same bathtub. The same, you know what I'm saying? Your blood. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Wear the same clothes. All of that. Like, that's real. So, like, people look at us now and be like, oh, it look like they just some rat dudes that came together. Like, <laughs> no. Like, we started this shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. I mean, you do you know. look like rap dudes who did come together. But, like. <laughs> 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 no, we do. We yeah. do. And a lot of people, you know, they always be wanting me to, you know, put them on. You know how that shit go. Oh, yeah. You know, and like, yo, listen, it's, it's, it's not like that. You know what I'm saying? Like. This is family. You know yeah. What I'm saying? This is something different. This so you don't remember the first time that you met them? No, I was. Nah, you, were, you were like dumb yeah. young, like so <laughs> young. Like I was at the hospital when Benny came out the pussy. Yeah. Like yeah. I was, my mom was in, in the room. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. This is far as back as I can remember. You know what I'm saying? Like how Benny, you know, he got the Tana talk shit, Montana, like. Every weekend I was on Montana, you know mm. what I'm saying? The same street he talked about, which was an infamous dope selling street, a hair on selling street. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's where we played football at. That's where we hung out on you know, on the weekends on Sunday. We had family dinner. You know, this was just, you know, the biggest drug dealers that sold hair on was from Montana. So we seeing them out there, it's like like I said, we grew up very, very early. You know, what yeah, I'm saying? and very, very close. So it was just like 100%. nobody could like you know get no. in between you, and you always it's, had each other's back. It's never happened ever in our life. Yeah, nobody ever got between us ever. What kind of car were you pushing in your early twenties in Buffalo? Um, in two thousand, I had a two thousand mm. Explorer. I used to ride around, get head in the shit, <laughs> all that. Because I used to drive in a hub. Remember, that's why I was telling you. 
I stayed in the burbs, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? With my grandma, but I still just went to the east side every day. See, the Buffalo's so small, even when I'm talking about the burbs, you can still get to the hood in five minutes. Yeah. yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? One street. Yeah. But it was the simple fact is everybody in the hood didn't want to cross over Kenmore or Niagara Falls <laughs> Boulevard. Like they didn't want to go out there. So it was different for me, but it was perfect for me because I used to go to Buffalo, you know get what I got and come to the burbs and, and kill them. So I had money early because it was just like when I was out there and I went to the school and started meeting certain people, you know, I started meeting a couple chicks, a couple homies and, you know, I was, you know, I always looked cool and all of that. So people just was like, yo, who are you? Da, da, da. And then of course it was like, I was already hustling. But then once I met certain people and I'm like, wait a minute, y'all out here paying this, doing that, y'all need this. It was always supply and demand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was just like, okay, well, that's what that's what expanded me early because I was in a neighborhood that needed it and I was already the cool dude and it was just like, well, shit, I'm about to just take advantage of this shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean. Like, at 17, 18, like, I had pounds and shit then. You yeah. Know what yeah. I'm so, you know, it, it wasn't nothing. You know and then I mean? you get locked up. Yeah, that was, um, that was years later, though. Because that's a part of the supply and demand shit. You know what I'm saying? It was just like me going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, in Atlanta, you know, you just got to be 21. You know what I'm saying? To get, get pistols and shit. You know what I'm saying? So they never caught me with a pistol. But, you know, they had me on conspiracy and giving, like, false statements. Because I, I would take people personally in the pawn shop. They had me on camera literally going like this on camera and shit. Because I was comfortable. <laughs> Yeah, because you it wasn't illegal in my eyes. Cause shit, you know it's just like all you gotta do is be twenty one, you can buy him. So you could take one person in a pawn shop, and you could get ten of them, fifteen of them. You know what I'm saying at one time. Sure. So it was just like shit, yo. I need this. I need that. I need this. Like I go. I fly. You know what I'm saying to Buffalo, get an order, fly back, then mega bust them shits back or get a rental. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. It, it, it's times where I didn't had you know six or seven of them in a the trip it was crazy one time in particular it was i had like because this was just me hustling like i said the fear and all that i didn't even have it like it was one time i had like six or seven of them in the trunk and before i even got out of georgia it was it was raining so bad the car hydro plane i'm mm. fucking spinning it was a damn green saturn <laughs> i'm spinning in this shit shit finally hit the side of the road boom the whole back of the fucking car, the, the bumper was on the ground. Fuck. Everything was pouring down, raining. And I had my man ride with me from D.C. Because he had never been a Buffalo. But he knew what I was doing. But I told him. By the way, thank God. <laughs> yeah, man, for sure. And I told him, no, I'm like, yo, you know, we good if anything happened, bro. They're saying you just don't know nothing. So don't even worry about that. But I just, you know, just he wanted to come for the ride and experience Buffalo. So... That shit happened. We had to hop out, pick the fucking, we rolled down the back window, picked up the bumper, had to put the bumper like in the back seat. It's fucking it's pouring raining. down, raining, yeah, <laughs> shit. We got the highway looking crazy, all of that shit. No lights in the back, no nothing. So we, you know, we get to the next exit. The car was still drivable though. We get off at the next exit, we go to a gas station. It has some bungees, you know what I'm saying? We fucking bungee from the top of the trunk <laughs> all the way to underneath the shit. Put the fucking bumper back on the shit. We ain't had no back lights or nothing. And I'm like, I still got to go to Buffalo. With the car looking like that, no back lights, no fucking nothing. And we made it all airy P Pennsylvania like, um, like an hour out. And I'm tired and shit. I'm fucking blowing it through fucking, uh, you know, airy. Got pulled over. Uh. With the shits in the trunk, with the back of it, everything looking like that. And it was crazy because just the week before that, I applied for community college. And I had an ID, you know what I'm saying, that had Georgia perimeter on the shit. So when they pulled me over, I'm like, they're like, why are you going so fast? I'm like, sir, man, I just drove from Atlanta. I'm tired. They didn't even talk about the fucking trunk at all. 
And I'm just like, yeah, I'm just tired, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, My friend wants I'm to go to see it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I'm, no, I told him I was going to get my clothes because I had to start school. And I showed him my school ID. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm just, you know, I'm tired, man. I'm just coming up here to get my school clothes and everything. You know, I'm about to start college or whatever. And I showed him my, my driver's license, showed him my ID. He just wrote me the ticket and was like, all right, man, just just get home safe, man. Slow down. Mm. You know what I mean? But it, I came, to, I had so many close calls like that, you know what I'm saying, with that, where I could have really, like, went down, down, down. Yeah. You know, thank God that when I did go down, it was just a conspiracy of just giving the false statement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was never for, you know, possession and no shit like that or oh. trafficking. Yeah. yeah they shit like that. Whatever T.I. got yeah. with, yeah. like, 30 yeah. in the back. Yeah, so it been over. If, if, you, if you had all those close calls and then they finally picked you up mm -hmm. did you feel like man like i had all these all these chances and that that's it now like i'm i'm done nah because that's what i'm saying it was just like the most this shit even carried was two years so it was just like i'll be back you know what i'm saying like <laughs> you like i could do that yeah yeah it was just like shit i'll be back you know what i'm saying like i'm not about to you know cry over no shit like that i was younger you know what I mean? I still had wild potential, and it was just like, you know, we was already starting to try to do the rap shit. Yeah. So it was just like, we was dope then. Like, we could have been put on then. That's how dope we was. So let me ask you a question. It's all about supply and demand throughout your whole life, right? <clears throat> right. Early, even in your, in your early 20s. At that point, where did you figure the supply and demand fell in terms of, like, art? Like, your art? Mm -hmm. I mean... You got to understand, like, even when I came out, you know, I gave away my music for free. You know what I'm saying? It was like testers. All the stores I put them in. All every, you know how people was going around trying to sell their shit? Man, give me $10. Give me 5 It was just like, no, nah, I want you to have it for free. You mm. know what I'm saying? Because once you get some of it, a, a, a taste of this, it's over. You know what I'm saying? So I always had that mentality, like I said, since then. It was just like, okay, let me get y'all these to print up a few thousand copies, put some shits all across Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? And I did that for like the first, you know, uh, uh, projects, part one, two, and three. Yeah, but like... like that. But I'm saying, though, that, like, it was necessary that you put your voice out there because it was missing, right? Yeah, like, yeah. you didn't hear someone like you out there yeah, telling yeah. the stories that yeah, you wanted to tell. 100%. Yeah, right? I grew up on what we grew up on. And it was just like, yo, why all these dudes from Buffalo trying to sound like they from the South? Mm. Like, we need to be putting out that raw shit of what we do. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's basically what it was. It was just like, I could show y'all better than I could tell y'all. Because even when I told people, like... You know, I'm about to start rapping and shit. And I'm listening to MF Doom beats and I'm listening to Jay Dilla. You know what I'm saying? Donuts and everything. Just trying to fucking pick out beats to rap over. Everybody was like, that shit ain't gonna work. You know what I'm saying? My my whole goal was to show people like, this shit gonna work. Because even like then, I was trying to get some of the homies to invest with me and all of that. And they like, yo, we can't party to this shit. We can't dance to this shit. We can't get bitches to this shit. They all dogged me. And shit. I so you approach like, them like with a business plan and you're like, so here's the product. Mm -hmm. I want you to, you know, be a part of this, partner mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. And they just flat out all shut you them. down. All of them. You got no. a long memory? No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy because I'm still cool with everybody. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if they didn't get it, they didn't get it. You know what I mean? Just the same way somebody might come to me and I don't get it right now. Mm -hmm. If they show me different, then that's shame on me. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. And I'm still going to respect it. Like, man, that's good for you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what they do to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, you, you gave us the opportunity, but shit, you really did it. You know what I'm saying? And you know, at that time, too, nobody has ever came from Buffalo. So it was like... They figured that was the blueprint of doing the South shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, this isn't going to work. How the fuck is you going to come out with some hard shit rapping over Alchemist when we in the clubs every week popping bottles to Jeezy? Right. Gucci yeah. Gucci Man and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, well, who was the biggest person to come out of Buffalo before you? Rick James. <laughs> yeah. 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 Way back. Yeah, so, if we didn't have anybody. You know, no fucking a &Rs was coming to check for music out of Buffalo, no labels, no nothing, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, I really had to work extremely hard because, you know, I had to really get it out the fucking mud, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, How many times had you been to Toronto before before that? 
Um, once. Really? I only been to Toronto one time in my life. Period. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When you can still go, right? Like you. Nah. Oh, got that's it. That's why. You know got what it. Saying? You know, Drake Holla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so when 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 OVO and them are like blowing up, are you just like it's so close but so far? Nah, I really wasn't even thinking like that. Like when they was just when they was blowing up, I was just playing the shit. I didn't even think nothing like it. Because like, if you think of like unlikely stories, like Toronto is not exactly like you know at one point the hotbed of like hip hop, and then now it's like the center where you know he flies everybody up for this festival that like is the biggest thing, bigger than like Summer Jam, right? Yeah, yeah. But so Buffalo, you know, in your mind is is so different from everywhere else it's not atlanta it's not new york city it's 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 your own yeah were there any other artists coming up around your time that you know were putting out music and you know just the buffalo mentality it was just like the guys that was making the music wasn't leaving buffalo right so it's just like how the fuck somebody gonna hear this shit you right i mean and the thing about me was I was already moving and shaking. Like, I wasn't the person that just sit in Buffalo. By then, I'm already seasoned, going around city to city, doing yeah. what we doing, having fun. You know what I'm saying? With so, a bumper or without, doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It don't matter. I'm yeah. getting it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's how it was. It was just like, I'm seeing this shit in a lifestyle that they didn't see. So, okay, you're handing out physicals, you're printing them up, and maybe you'll take a loss on those to make, yeah. like, you know, exactly. a bigger fortune later. 100%. But while you're in it, are you performing around town? Are you like, you know, mm-hmm. getting involved with the internet? How are you marketing yourself? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I was just giving out the music for free at first. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, I, I felt like I need to get a buzz in Buffalo before anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was just giving out the music for free. And, and you were um, always West Side Gun? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And, um, so people start catching on, like they they hear the CD and it was like a different kind of fan that was fucking with me though. It wasn't because everybody at the time was still listening to the South shit, mm-hmm. but like you know the guys that was really into like art and really into fashion and motherfuckers skateboarding and break dancing and just listening to that boom bap and they just that's what they love. Like they only was listening to. You know the doom type shit. You yep. know what I'm saying they loved me. Like I had that community to fuck with me. You see right. What I'm yeah. Saying? Right. And it was just like once I got that community to fuck with me, which that's who I'm a street dude. So of course I would wanted everybody to fuck with me. But let's be realistic. At that time, it, you know, seven years ago, it that was it wasn't popular to do the shit that we doing now. So it was just like. If I could just get a couple of them, but still get everybody that do like this this style of music, I'm good. Yeah. Because the thing is, I'm a street dude, so of course a couple people that fuck with me just from me being me still gonna listen because they like, okay, that's West Side. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Did any artists come through to play? I don't know the name of it. Where, wherever the Sabers play, like, did anybody big artists come through and you tried to like you know Never. politic with them? Never. 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 You know what I mean? It's it's <clears throat> I move different, bro. Mm-hmm. Like West Side Gun is a one of one, you know what I'm saying? The people that you know, people would think I did this and did that. I don't. It's like I just move how. It's I can't even explain it. Like I made the recipe, <laughs> but I can't even explain the recipe. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I just I literally just do me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't focus on what's hot, what's not, what I think gonna sell, what I like, whatever. Like what's popular. I just really literally just do me. And if you fuck with me, you're going to fuck with it. And that's what we, we talk about that all the time, too, like for us. Right. Like because we put our stuff out there and it's not about like it's sort of like what Steve Jobs, you know, did. He was like, I'm going to create this and people are going to need that. Right. Like people aren't asking for an iPod. I'm going to make the iPod and they'll want it because I make it. Mm-hmm. Same thing with you. Same mm-hmm. thing I feel like with us, too. Mm-hmm. It's not about like beta testing it or something like that. Yeah. It's like you're just putting out your truth, right? Yeah, that's it. That's all it's about. And that's why I am who I am. That's why I could go around, you know, on my fly guy shit. And, um, you know, I really don't. It, it's weird. Like, even when I meet people, I, it don't excite me. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? I I be having a mentality like, shit, they need to be happy they met me. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? Like, seriously. Yeah. Because I like. 
everything I done been through in my life and I really worked hard and I got it out the mud and I, 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 I man, I done did wild shit and it's just like, yo, music don't make the fucking man. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck how much money you got. I don't care where you from, none of that shit. I know what I've done and I know what I done seen and I just, and I know, you know, it's like, I just do me. I just do me 100% and, you know, thank God, man, people just fucking with the vibe, just me as a person. You know what I mean? Cause it's just it's a, it's it's a lot to me. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's just not rap. Like you getting a hustler, the CEO of me, you getting a designer of me, you getting the wrestling side of me, you getting the art side of me. Well, here's the thing about the wrestling you know? thing: we just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, every every time I try and get it, I'm just like, okay, like I respect it. I yeah, just I yeah. I just never take the time to actually watch. it. And we it. have a lot of mutual friends who really fuck with wrestling. Whether we, that's we Smoke Dizzle. Yeah, we whether, met at uh, Wally Mania. We did meet. Yeah, 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 yeah passing down in New Orleans. Yep, yep, exactly. Um, but exactly. but when you first got into wrestling, was that just an escape for you, or did you like appreciate the art? Yeah. It's, you know, growing up as a kid, you know what I'm saying? I had an Aunt Jenny, you know what I'm saying? And she was just big, you know, wrestling fan, big Hogan fan, you know what I mean? Over on Gray Street, which is in the hood. But, like, all the pay-per-views she'd get, you know what I'm saying? So, like, even growing up, I watched it. And it's like sometimes, just say, for instance, um, I, you know, she don't get it for whatever reason. Nah, I'm not even gonna say that because she always got it, but maybe I just didn't go to her house or whatever. You know, back then you can watch like pay per view through the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can hear it. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm <laughs> so that shit used to be fun. Like, I used to watch it. Like, I was always glued in. And, you know, she ended up, you know, passing, but um, it was just like I was in wrestling early, man. I'm talking about as far as back as I can remember. And then, like, even my cousins, they. Like I said, when I used to go out to the flea market and shit to get the cards and all of that, you know, I'd go out there and get figures and, you know, uh, Hogan t-shirts and, you know, all that type of shit. So, like, I've been in wrestling my whole life. I, I, I got out of it, you know, like around the time when I got locked up because that was the last shit, you know, before I got locked up, when I was locked up, when I first came, because it was just like, I wasn't even thinking about no wrestling. Right, you were thinking about real shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't even, so I got out of it for some years, you know what I'm saying? And then, um, it picked back up maybe, <clears throat> probably, about a year before, um, be, because I got out, I had violated, I had to go back to prison for another year and a half, and when I came out that time, is when I started watching wrestling again. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And Conway got shot like a year later. And um, that's when I started doing uh, the first project. But I had, this was, I had the Ric Flair skit before anybody. Mm. You know, pe you know when Raw's did it, people thought Raw's did it first. We could check the, we could check the <laughs> dates. <laughs> Nobody knew who the fuck I was. Right, so like, who right. am I? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, all of that shit, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm big on skits, you know yeah, what I'm and I'm I'm big on just putting things together. You know. What I'm so saying? real quick on the wrestling thing, I had wrestling since day one in my shit. We heard we heard from some friends that you might have a bigger wrestling thing on the way. Yeah, you care to talk about that? A little bit. Okay, <laughs> a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But House of Glory Wrestling. You know what I'm saying? Hog. Um, it's a dope underground wrestling in Queens. The owner reached out to me because he know I'm a big wrestling fan. Because everybody know, you know, I'm front row WrestleMania. I'm front row Royal Rumble. I'm front row you live Survivor it. Series. Yeah. yeah, like, there's nobody in the industry that is involved with wrestling like me. Nobody. Rick I'm Ross had the, um, the the Ric Flair <laughs> skit. <laughs> just just fact-checking. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. looking at how mad you are right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but, like, nobody, nobody is invested in this wrestling more than me. You know what I'm saying? So... Because I will see these guys if they were there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, shout out to Wale, shout out to Smoke Dizzle. You know, we've been to a lot of shit together, but, you know, for every one they do, I might do four, mm. five. You mm. know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm about to be front row three times in the next month. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, that's do what you, I do. Do you hope that underground wrestling, and not just Hog, but like underground wrestling overall becomes bigger? Because then it's not underground anymore, right? Yeah, I mean, the thing about it is everything isn't for everybody. So I look at it as like hog need to be the only one of our kind and we good. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like we don't need any more hogs coming at us because we're going to do a little, you know, do things a little different. You know, Master P involved now. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like 
you know, my business partner, you know, from day one, like I said, the owner, you know, he called me B. And um, he was just like, yo, you know, I got an underground wrestling in the Queens. You ever in New York? You know, come check it out. So I started looking into it, just watching the matches just online. And um, I'm like, yo, this shit dope. You know, I'll be in New York City a lot. Next time you have one, I'm going to go. And, and I seen the next time it was uh, Ric Flair going to be there. So I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> From the Rick Ross really? skit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's crazy because I wanted to meet Ric Flair because he played me one time and I wanted to see him. Like seriously, that's he, why I really wanted to see him. How do he play you? Because I, I don't, I don't like. I remember I told you I don't get excited to meeting anybody, and um, I was out to eat with my grandfather and shit. And Ric Flair was at the bar by himself. It was nobody in the restaurant either. It was maybe me and my granddad, probably like one <laughs> other couple, ten tables <laughs> down, and just Ric Flair sitting at the fucking bar by himself. So like, Ric Flair was, you know close as you like literally my back is like this and you flare like if i just had my back to you right now you would be flaring it was me like i was at the table right next to flare were, were you like nervous yeah saying? were you like this can't be like now nah, i'm just sitting there like oh shit but i didn't even really you know what i'm saying i didn't even say nothing to nothing and then my granddad was like yo man you you know you grew up you know he know how big i am in the wrestling like yo bro you gotta go say something and that's rick flair you might not never see him again that i'm like ah. like man you have to i'm thinking like i ain't nobody in here man he just sitting here by himself it's just me and him and i'm saying i just i went over there like yo you know what i'm saying excuse me you know what i'm saying told him my name or whatever told him i respect him and i was just like yo do you mind if i take a picture and he told me no oh you know what i'm saying and I looked at him like I gave him one of them looks like, man, I will fucking suplex you on real life. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, I, I respect that. Maybe he had a bad day. Yeah, people yeah. go through shit. Yeah, so yeah, he, yeah. He probably was sitting at the bar, just went through some crazy shit. Like he probably get people asking for pictures all day long. So yeah. finally, when he finally gets to a place where he just relaxing, nobody in there. And this guy comes want, up, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. It, that probably how it happened, you know what I'm saying? But I was just like, yo, I want to, I want to go back and meet Flair again. <laughs> and I went though, and it was all love now. It was yeah, like yeah. Crazy. Like he don't, of course he don't remember that shit. And I, and and we became cool at that moment. I didn't even bring it up. It was just like, it's nothing to talk about. You yeah, know what I'm saying. But mm -hmm. you know, I respect Flair. You know what I'm saying. But when I went to Hulk. It was just dope, you know what I'm saying? I got to meet Flair, and then they actually did the because the meet and greet was before the wrestling matches, so it was already they won me over already meeting Flair off Rip. Yeah, and then I'm watching the matches, and I'm like, yo, this shit is dope. This shit got wild potential, you know what I'm saying? So I just started going to him, you know what I mean? On my own, flying <clears> out there, it wasn't like he flew me here or made him, you know. You are the fly guy, so yeah, whatever. like yeah. I just go there, watch all the shit. And um, I just love how you know how he was giving it up, and um, you know, like a year later, I asked him like, "Yo, bro, like you ever, you know, what I mean, want to have an investor? Because you know, I I had a little bread, so it was just like, yo, man, we can, you know, we could push it over here, we could get a bigger, you know, what I mean, just I'm just thinking, just you know, it was no merch, I'm like how you got wrestlers, no merch. I'm just yeah. thinking of like all the ways that me doing what I'm doing because, you know, this is me already with. You know, Griselda being Griselda. So it's like, I can do this with wrestling. This is something I, I dreamed about doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, so I asked him, and he was just like, you Nah, I really don't <laughs> want to invest there. I'm good. <laughs> and um, he was like, You know, it's only one investor I would ever want to even be a part of this. And there's no disrespect to you, but it's Master P. I just respect his, you know, um, just the way you give it up and mm -hmm. you know they they believe in god the same and it was just everything it was just like if it could be anybody people would think i would want to be with puffy or i would want to be with you know uh, uh jay-z or whatever but i wanted to be with p and i was like okay that's 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 what's up you know what i'm saying so i'm like yo listen how about this if i could get you master p <laughs> you'll you'll you know what i'm saying you'll let me invest too you know well, what, what was your relationship like with Master P at this point? Never knew him. Okay. <laughs> just just being clear. Just being clear. <laughs> yeah. Never knew him. Mm -hmm. Hadn't a run into him at a bar. Actually, <laughs> actually, my partner, the one that introduced me to Master P, like I didn't even, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I didn't even bring him to him. He brought him to me. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? I, I just had the confidence, though, of saying like, yo, I'm going to get him. Yeah. yeah. So 
he was like, I bet. And I was like, you know, I always was talking to him like, okay, now listen, you know, I know you want Master P, but what about Master P say no? Now you're back to the ground zero, you know what I'm saying? So I was just like, how about you just let me invest now? we get it more lit. And then now it's easier to approach Master P. And if Master P say no, now I can go to, to a Hove or I can go to a Paul yeah. or I can go to just a lot of people in the industry that will probably want to invest in what we had going on because I, I plan to make the shit extra lit. And he was like, I bet. So we just kept having meetings and I stopped. And he had the opportunity to meet P. And when he met P, P loved it. And shit, he signed right on. You wow, know crazy. And then, you know, a few days later, I flew out to LA, met P. And now that's like the videos you see of us together and all of that. You know, I designed some merch and we just went out there and we've been just holding it down ever since. So now it's like, the things that's about to happen or it's about to be crazy like we talking about it now but by the summertime you're gonna be like I remember he was just talking about that <laughs> shit but like the biggest names is, is getting involved and we looking at some of the top wrestlers like you know that WWE slept on or was over there but they really you know they didn't push him the right way it's like come to us you know what I'm saying we, we got that we got that no limit money too. Yeah. <laughs> got that Suge Knight energy though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come over here with us. Huh, take this chain. You don't hey, like the, the owners the chains, all, the all up on the ring <laughs> getting hit by chairs and hanging out with Donald Trump. Come over here. Come over here. Man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, right now it's it's like we basically start from the ground up now, but all of us together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like Okay, everything me and him was built on, we here now. So, like, now let's just start from scratch with P. So, yeah. now we just all involved. So, now, you know, with the merch and everything, we you know what I mean? Like, I have to go look for certain wrestlers to still get because this is business. Like, people was going to only want merch from a star. You're not going to want to get merch from a guy who loses every other match and just, like, no, nah, like, we need to have... We need to build superstars. Go yeah. build superstars and go get some superstars mm -hmm. and mix them all in. And, you know, we TV deals is already, you know what I'm saying, on the table. It's a lot of shit going Damn. on right now already. Hey, gang, it's Jeff here from the podcast, the podcast that you're listening to right now. And let me tell you something. We've got a special offer for you right here, right now. You can go to our website at itsthereal.com slash shop and get our t-shirts at 40% off. I'm talking large t-shirts, medium, small, extra large, double extra large. We've even got triple extra large. Hey, if you're somewhere in the middle of that, we might even chop down a couple sizes just for you. Custom sizes, why not? Custom sizes? Who knows? Some some schmediums? Some schmediums? Some schlarges? <laughs> What's a large? Jeff. A small large is We're medium. doing customs. <laughs> We're doing customs. You want a large? We'll give you a medium. <laughs> How about that? Up to 40% off. It's the real.com slash shop right now. They're great t-shirts. They're comfortable t-shirts. Get one for you. Get one for a friend. And here's the best thing. Mm -hmm. That money will get us back to New York because we have an apartment up there and we don't. We don't want to live out of our suitcases forever. So no. it's the real.com slash shops where you go. Clearance sale up to 40% off. Jeff, back to the podcast. So Conway gets shot. Mm -hmm. Where were you and what were you thinking when that did happen? Well, I had just left Buffalo the day before it. You know what I'm saying? We went to Buffalo together when it happened. You know what I'm saying? And um, this was when we were just on our grind, just trying to get up. I was behind Conway. We was in Atlanta doing the, like the strip club you know, performing at fucking Stroker's this night and Magic City this night, like doing whatever we could. We'd just take like, you know, three, four thousand, you know, the, the typical, you know what I'm saying? Play our shit for an hour straight. We gonna throw this money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's what we was doing. It was just like the, the Atlanta culture because at that time, Atlanta was it. The South was winning. It, it Like New York music was irrelevant. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, you know, Conway music at that time was staying on the couch, let's pop this bottles, let's go in the strip club, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
he got songs best pussy in the world and shit <laughs> like that like that was Conway then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we was already lit we was doing the strip club shit people was fucking with us Atlantic Records already had called me for a meeting and um you know they was already interested you know what I'm saying so that was already a big deal because it was like you know we from Buffalo you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying so if Atlantic Records is calling for you know me is it ain't interesting how did they find you because my guy uh it's wild how shit happens but when I went to high school in Atlanta that you know that first year that junior year when like I said when I was on my hockey jersey and all that when I was in the fucking office it was the first day so you know the new kids was there and my man he had just came from Jersey so he was on the same type of shit too and uh we were just like looking like you know just the New York kids type shit from the outside looking into my other guy he was from Grand Rapids you know what I'm saying so it's crazy how all this shit come together now but uh we was all in the office together we all became wild cool because we was just in there together you know and I had my one man we called him pun because he was real fat in Puerto Rican from the Bronx <laughs> you know what I'm saying was, you know what I mean for real shout out to pun listen if you ever watching this man reach out to me man my man Pito Paul, you know what I'm saying? But we called him punk because he was fat Puerto Rican <laughs> from Gun Hill. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> and we was just all in there together, the new kids. And um but Jers end up working for Atlantic Records. You know what I'm saying? Wild. Yeah, and and he just he ended up seeing me, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if it was Facebook or whatever the fuck. I remember he just reaching out and he was working at Atlantic and he end up just talking to them and like, yo, these dudes is dope. And then they just start, you know what I'm saying, fucking with us. And it, and it just happened like that. So we was, French Montana was performing in Buffalo. So we was in Atlanta. And um, one of the promoters was like, you know, you know how that shit go when people go city to city, like who trying to get a verse, we can do it for this mount right now. Yeah, right, yeah. You got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we was on that type of shit, you know what I'm saying? like. Nobody knew us, so it was we didn't care about paying for the verse. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, okay, this could help us out. Yeah. You know, French Montana, he was rapping on South shit. So like it was sounding good with you know, seven years ago French was that's when he was yeah. doing oh, his yeah. thing. So it was just like then we got an opportunity to do a song with French Montana. We got the money, let's go do it. When we flew to Buffalo, the song never happened. You know what I'm saying? Like some shit popped off. He ended up leaving. We never got up at the studio or whatever. Damn. And um, I'm just like, yo, I'm gone because I only came for this. You right. You know what I'm saying? You know, Buffalo is wild at that time. You know, everybody we fucking with is in the streets. Like, not no play play shit. Like, this motherfucker's dropping every other day. Everybody's still hustling. Everybody really going through that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it's, it's good for me to visit because I was gone now. So it was just like, it was good for me to visit, um, but not stay. Because, you know, I had just got out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it was just like, nah, let me let me focus too hot on this out there. music yeah. shit with Conway. And, um, yeah, man, we went, flew up there. Everything was good. It's crazy because I, I know we was we recorded that shit. I don't know where the fuck the footage at. Because we had just bought a camera and was just like, we're going to just be taping everything we do. And I, rem- I remember vividly, we had a camera on a plane, mm. like talking like, yo, we going to see French Montana, or I don't know, man, that, yo, if <laughs> that footage ever come up, it's going to be crazy. You know, a day before kind we got shot. So yeah, man. Was regular, all that. You know what I'm saying? So so you turned around, but Conway stayed. Exactly, because his son was there. You know what mm. I'm saying? So he like, well, shit, if I'm here, I might as well go ahead and spend some time with my son. I just come home in like two days. And I'm like, well, shit, I need to go back. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think at that time, I wasn't even supposed to travel. You mm. know what I'm saying? But I just was like, fuck it, this is an opportunity for yeah. Montana. Yeah. Let me just go come back real quick type shit. So I was just already like, if we ain't doing a song, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? Next morning type shit. Flew in, didn't happen. Next morning, I'm gone. And he was just like, I'm going to stay. So I was like, all right. You know what I'm saying? Shit, regular shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you don't got to you don't gotta leave, you know what I'm saying? I do. So he stayed and then shit. I got a call like it was like four or five in the morning, you know what I'm saying? From his from his baby moms. Like, yo, you know what I'm saying, your brother got shot and all of that. So when I heard that, I was just like, man, you know what I mean? I went crazy because you know, I had already lost Sheen Gun, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So and um I was the last person that talked to Sheen Gun, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it was just like, damn. 
this shit can't be happening again. You know what I mean? And um, it's a nightmare. Yeah, cause I lost a lot of people, but you know they was just homies. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like my brother, my first cousin. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you know I had already lost Bacon. You know what I'm saying? Who, you know? Does any of this make you hate Buffalo in that moment? Nah, I love my city. Even even at the the lowest of the lows. Yeah, I love my city. I love my city. That's why I said we riding around now with Maybachs and Lamborghinis. I'm in the same city with this shit on my neck. If I if I feared anything, I wouldn't do that. You mm. know what I'm saying? I like that's the thing. I don't I don't have no fear. You know what I mean? I move smart, mm -hmm. but it's not the fact that I have fear. I I do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm a you know when what to do and what not to do. You know what I'm saying? Like we all. You know, we all grown, and I, I always been a smart dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that nothing can't happen to me, because shit, every, everybody who said can't shit happen to them, it happened to them. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Look so, at Nipsey. Yeah, yeah it's right. like we not, you know, you know, everybody had a time, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I got I got kids, and I, I just got, you know, big fish, you know what I mean? Fish to fry. Like, yeah. this is still the beginning for me, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, you know, the way... I think my city respect me a lot, you know what I'm saying? Because the things I'm doing has never been done. And I represent us to the fullest. I could have been like, yo, I'm from Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm right. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. from Atlanta. So you know? 2015, your music's buzzing around the internet. Mm -hmm. Do you feel a different energy? Uh, kind of. You know what I'm saying? The thing was, like, even in 15, it was still kind of like it wasn't out there out there you know what i'm saying um it was a bubble you felt yeah, like yeah it's like you know i gotta work harder like i said everything happened organically you know what i'm saying it was just like let me just keep making the dope music it's gonna click i don't know when it's gonna click it might take five years mm. it might take 10 years but i don't have none but time long as i'm making bread i'm not losing no 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 sleep i'm not fucking missing no meals and my kids is fly i'm still fly you know, everything will come because that's the thing. I always still hustle. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, always, bro. Like, I literally just quit a couple years ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, I'm going to be okay regardless. You, you found that saying? balance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it was just like, <clears throat> if I get, if I do this 100%, like not 60, 40, 70, 30, like if I do this 100%, this should be the biggest thing ever in the culture. And I just took that approach. I had enough money at the time. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy because it was I, I, I made a move. I remember vividly, like, yo, if I can make if I can do this move right here, I'ma quit. Took that chance, made the move, and I quit. You know what I'm saying? I just been doing this shit ever since. Mm. And now we here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What was your first show like? Um like your first first. First, 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 first was at Broadway Joe's. I got my second my second um track on part seven is called Broadway Joe's. And um, you know, I started off like that. It was crazy cause that <clears throat> when I when I remember when I told you I, I was in the burbs and I was it's crazy how that little town town of wanna like changed me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's when I started getting money. Because like it was supply and demand now really with the on on you know the, the weed tip because everybody out there was smoking heavy weed da, 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 da. and you know what I'm saying of course in the east side I know people getting them shits from Arizona flew in <laughs> so it was extra cheap you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying but I could go out there and sell them for extra high so it was just like okay but when I was meeting the people out there of course I started meeting cool dudes too you know what I'm saying even though they was from the burbs they was cool as fuck you know what I'm <laughs> saying. They all they do a smoke and motherfuckers having orgies and all type <laughs> of kid, you know, because we still was teenagers. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, it was wild fun. Like, it's a whole nother fucker. Even though it's five minutes from the hood, yeah. this is a whole fucking other world out here. But nobody from the hood would even, they were scared to even just go out there. Like, hmm. who I know? Where am I going to do? Where We can't sit on the corner and sell nothing. Like, you know, you had to be connected. But, by me going to school there from a little two months with no classes, I was able to meet certain people. You know what I'm saying? And when I started meeting certain people, they were going to Broadway Joe's. You see what I'm saying? These is the dudes that introduced me to like the megahertz and fucking Necro and all these dudes that like 
and people in the hood didn't even like who the fuck is that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nonfiction and You're right, MF yeah. Doom, like all oh, this, you know, that was them days. You know what I'm saying? So people in the hood, they listening to Dipset. You yeah, know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? they listening like, to G on it. They listening to Hove. They listening. To you're t- the first black person I know that's that's listened to Necro. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ill Bill Autumn. I yeah. know them all. <laughs> yeah, for real. You know what I'm saying? So that's I was introduced to that shit. So nobody else was. So I'm listening to that production. Like mm-hmm. this shit is fucking crazy. Cause you know we all come from the Wu Tang era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like everything was coming more popular and mainstream. You know what I'm saying? You know, whole blueprint. This was all then. Yeah. Everybody started becoming, you know, more more uh commercial. Nas, all the all the legends, even Wu turned commercial. You know what I'm saying? With the yeah. debut, all that shit. It was just like but these other motherfuckers still had like that grimy gutter. The lyricism was nuts. It was like shit I never heard before. And um, so I used to go to my homie's house, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Ralph. Uh, he called himself Midnight Gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, Ralph Seriani, man. Shout out to him and his brother Gabe. His brother died. And um, his brother Gabe, the one that introduced me to him. And um, I used to go over there. He had the turntables and shit. Play the beats, you know what I mean? Because nobody wasn't even playing instruments. Like, you know what I mean? It was just different. Like, you know, it was vinyl. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It was a DJ. So <laughs> it was just like nobody in the hood even had the vinyl. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It was just like we partying. We having fun. We going to clubs. We playing, you know, this type of shit. But like, you know, Rough Riders and all that shit. It wasn't like this. Like going to somebody's house. He flipping the shit over. He cutting and scratching. It shit sounded crazy. And um, I started hanging out over there. You know what I'm saying? And they started going to, they was going to Broadway Joe's. I had never even heard about it. Shit was three minutes from my high school. You know what I'm saying? Passed by it all the time. I just didn't know nothing about the shit. You know, it was Thursday nights. And um, I went over there and I'm just, I seen the atmosphere, motherfuckers break dancing, motherfuckers <laughs> just all over the place. And I, and I remember just rhyming up with Ralph all the time. And when it was my opportunity to perform at Broadway Joe's, he like, you want to do it? And I went up there and I did my one too. I bodied the shit. People start fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, when I was I was so I was extra lyrical. Because that's what I, I just Yeah. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? I was just Because it sounds good on, on wax, but maybe not yeah. like in a live performance yeah, where like, you have to actually breathe. <laughs> yeah, but it I mean it sounded it sounded good on wax and it sounded good on stage, but it was just like the shit I was rapping and being an extra lyrical and all of that, mm-hmm. everybody, my homies it's like too lyrical. You yeah. Know what I mean? So they was fucking with Conway and Benny. Mm-hmm. Cause they was the street, mm-hmm. raw. Yeah. Just you know what I'm saying? And then me, it was just like I it, I was going over people's heads and shit, talking piranhas and <laughs> this and that this crazy shit. You know, put your head in a helicopter plane. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, all over the place, <laughs> like what? <laughs> what the fuck is you, tarantula? <laughs> like you know what I mean? And I'm just going crazy with the syllables and all that shit. They like, yo, what the fuck are you talking about? Yo, this is a sound of buffalo. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So even when I perform, I didn't even invite them to see me perform. It was just like I'm gonna just get dope in this community. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happened. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how I met Derringer. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. Derringer was a part of that. Crazy. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, it's a different sound. So that's why, like, our music sound different because it's it's from Broadway Joe's. It's, it it came from that crowd, that surrounding that that piece of the culture right there. You know what I mean? So that's what just helped me, you know, groom me. And then when I start going over to their studio where Conway and Benny was at, it was just like when we get on a song, I would sound just way different from them. You know what I mean? But it was like my people's love my part. And then they people's love they part. And it was just like, okay, well shit, we could just get, you know what I mean, everybody. You know what I'm saying? That'd be all a buffalo. Like some people might you know, it's like some people, you know, loved Ray and Ghost, but shit, some people love method. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's yeah. like you know, that's just how it was with us. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, you know, you ask certain people in Buffalo, even to this day, who the best? Benny. Who the best? Conway. Who the best? West Side. You know what I'm saying? You're never going to hear. If you ask 10 different people, all 10 is not going to say, 
You know what I mean? Unanimous. Right. Like, yeah, bro, right. it's, nah, it's going to be. Rick James. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's going to be, it might be three, four for me, three, four for them, three, yeah. four for them. So yeah. it's just like, you know, I always, you know, that's the thing that'll never break us up because even when people be like, you know what I mean, leave comments like, oh, well, you know, Benny's the best or, or, or Conway's the, you know what I mean? Like, that shit don't affect us, man. Like, you know, we we know the vibe. Like, we all is one. Yep. That's how I look at the shit. People don't understand we was doing this when we was kids. That, you sound exactly like karaoke machines. Yeah. You sound exactly mm-hmm. like our friends, the locks. Like, no doubt. They're like, yo, we used to split like ramen together. Like, yeah. you can't split us up now. Yeah, yeah you know? Like, that shit, that, you know, that, that shit would break up a lot of crews. People would get the ego. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, as is, is dope as Benny is, I always tell people right now, you know, you know, Benny is the best rapper alive to me right now. He's on fucking fire. And I really know Benny and I know the stories and everything he's saying is true. And it's just like, yo, you can't even, like this, like you giving him too much. Like hmm. this shit is, is crazy. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, he still respect me as 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 the big cousin. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? He yeah. still respect me as the visionary. It's not one of them, well, I'm the best rapper alive, so fuck that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, it's like, okay, what we gotta do, what you what you think we should do, and, and they still follow my lead, and that's why Griselda works so good. When does Paul Rosenberg and Eminem and and the whole Shady come come knocking? Um Cause certainly it didn't work out with Atlantic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that came after I did the Fly God album. Mm-hmm. After I did the Fly God album, you know, I was still just independent, of course. I did that album on my own. I had, you know, Alchemist on it, you know, Static, you know, Rock Marcy production and rapping. I had fucking um, DJ Cubert on the cuts. I had Droog when Droog was, you know, when people still didn't even really know who Droog was. They thought it was Nas. Yeah, like yeah. I had Droog then, Action Bronson, Danny Brown, <laughs> Sky Zoo. <laughs> this is all me just still just on my own. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And um, it's a classic album, you know what I'm saying? And once I did that, I was like, I need management. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me take it further. I need management. You know, somebody that could just help me. They had a Rolodex because still being from Buffalo, nobody came to check for us. So it was just like I need somebody in the industry that's powerful that can. The music is already classic because that's and the you thing. did so much on your own. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I had managed myself all the way up. I I managed myself all the way up to three months ago. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I never had a publicist. I never had nothing. That was all just me, organic, moving how I move. Yep. I feel like you're not the type to. Um, like reach out to these different artists, right? I feel like you would let them come to you first. Is that is that it's just, the case? Nah, it was um, it was always just respect. Like I said, everything happened organic. Um, you know, Danny Brown had tweeted like I was his favorite rapper. So of course, you know what I mean. That happened. It was like, oh shit, he said that. Let me get him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean. Action Bronson. It was like. I forgot how me and Action even met, but we always been close. Every every since we met, loves wrestling. Yeah, we was <laughs> close. Yeah, we we've been wrestling together before. You know what I'm saying? It's like oh, um, I thought you said that you had wrestled like with him, and I was like, oh, yeah. I feel like <laughs> that's team. You know? Yeah, yeah it was yeah. like yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of. Nah, 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 but he will he will make an appearance at Hog. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. As soon as I did the Hog situation, I I, I went to his house. Yeah, you know, I was in New York to handle that. Yeah, I went to his house and told him about it. Showed him some clips. I'm like, yo, bro, you know I'm gonna need you. Like, man, should I get in the ring? And Queens, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, let's let's do it, him and Mayhem. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's like, wait, matter of fact, Mayhem was on Fly Guy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's what I'm saying. Like, I it was just <laughs> mutual respect, and you are, and like I'm rapping over Alchemist Production and, and Derringer Production, all these all these ill producers, and um, it was just like. I need help because the mute obviously I could do it on my own, but now I just need, you know, to take it a, a step further. Yep. And um I reached out to uh Goliath mm-hmm. because I wanted Paul to manage me. Um I never got a nobody ever hit me back, but then <laughs> Mike from over there. Harari, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um he ended up reaching out to me just from hearing about me. Because of course, if Danny Brown saying that, you gotta think at that time Goliath had Action Bronson, yep, yep, and Danny, Danny Brown, Brown yep, and yeah. Alchemist, yep. yep. 
So all these guys is on my album. Like, so who the fuck <laughs> is this kid? You know but also, saying? you would have to do business with them anyway, right? So you would have to go through them? I uh, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Paul. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I didn't. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, he reached out. When I did reach out to them, nobody I didn't get an answer. I'm, I might have even had the wrong information, but he ended up reaching out to me anyway. So I just start going over there a lot. Once I start going over there a lot, I start going to Rock Nation too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know I was cool, real cool with Emery. You know mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's our guy. Yep. Law, Bet on you know, yourself. Law, you know what I'm saying? Oh, shout yeah. out to Law. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like these is all my guys, and um, I had one over there. Uh, a guy named Polo. He's over there still. Jason. Um, in Spanish Ran. Yep. Shout out to Spanish Ran. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, Rand actually hit me up first, first, first out of everybody. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, they was playing my shit around the offices and all that. Rand, you know, invited me up there. We started getting cool. Then I started just meeting a different, you know, Emery. And then we, you know what I mean, had similar stories and mm -hmm. all that. We became cool. And then I met Law. Then me and Law started building. You know, he was doing the whole J Electronica. You know what I'm saying? And, the, um, the waiting process for that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Yo, Jay, stop playing. <laughs> That's the homie too, man. Shout out to Jay, man. Jay Electronica. But it was just like, you know. Also, I bet Law would have been a good shortcut to get to Master P, but whatever, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, true. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true, but you know, you know, at that time, I wasn't even yeah, 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 yeah. Master P. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was just, you know, I just wanted management. And like I said, everything up in organic. I didn't even want to sign to nobody. Cause it was just like I got Griselda. I right. just need management, somebody that can help me take this shit to another level. So, you know, fast forward a little bit. Me just, you know, every time I come in New York, I got family out on the Goliath side, just hanging out over there. I'm at Rock Nation. I'm going. I'm literally going from one office to the other same day, just hanging out with everybody. And um, you know, Paul just came to me one day and was like, "Yo, man, I think I got a a, a better situation for you. I'm gonna talk to my partner." And I was like, all right, well, cool. Just holler at me. You know what I mean? Let me know. Because at that time, we had already basically agreed on I was going to do the management with them. Mm -hmm. Because the thing was, it was just like, at that time, Rock Nation was the homies. It was family and all of that. And my only thing was they was getting a lot of people at that particular time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm just like, yo, for the kind of music I make, it needs to be hands-on. I can't wait no longer. I can't be like, okay, let me sit over here because y'all just signed four or five popular stars that everybody know. Yeah. This need to be organic. They, they need to move like me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I need somebody just really hands-on. I didn't want somebody that was kind of, you know, they was big. They had everybody. You know what I'm saying? From, you know, the Rihannas to fucking J. Cole's to... The big Sean's and then they were signing a lot of heavyweights. Well, but then also like, you know, if you did go over there at that time, you know, like yes, they're they're signing all these people and you want somebody that, that can be hands on with it, but you also you need somebody who actually like gives a shit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like and I think it's what you're saying, but it's just like this thing where it would take a long time for your stuff to come out. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I felt. It was just like I can't have nobody that was um focusing on me but five other people at the same time yeah mm -hmm. because that's not how i operate i was already doing everything on my own for so long i can't be you know put on the back seat for somebody else because like i always told you i got that mentality of <laughs> i'm bigger than them yeah. You know yeah i'm saying people the world might not know that yet yeah but with the right people behind me you will see eventually you know what i'm saying so i didn't want to be lost in the shuffle yeah but i loved them guy i always did yeah you know what I mean? Still to this day, like, that's that's fam. If I call them, they picking up, vice versa. But that's why I made that decision at that time. Because yeah. it was like, yo, I looked at it as like this. Once Paul threw that opportunity, because like I said, I was thinking management first. Yeah. But once he said that, it was like, me being who I am, I'm like, I can pick one on for management, one on for the label. Because Rock Nation, like, what do you want to do? So I can do a label situation or I can do management or both. They yeah. just like what you want to do because mm -hmm. we cool. They fuck with the music, the vision, everything was there. And um, 
you know, ran and polo, like they was gonna be just more hands on with me and all of that. So it was just like, okay, with the help of law and just me being so close with Emory, it's like I could get shit done if I needed to be. But it was like, okay, if I do the management deal with Goliath, like I said, I could do the label deal or vice versa. So, mm -hmm. you know, Paul was just like, um, you know, let me talk to my partner, which of course was Marshall. You know, mm. I mean, at the time I didn't know, but it ended up being Marshall because he was trying to catch Marshall up off who, you know, we were. You know what I'm saying? You know, he probably didn't hear Fly God and right. shit like that because it still was underground kind of, you know what I mean? Like an underground cessation. So um, he was like, yo, my, I talked to my partner. I mean, we want to give you a label situation. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, okay. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, like, you know what I mean? Now we talking. Like, now I, my options is more different because now once he said that, now I'm like, okay, I could do both. Mm -hmm. Whichever one I choose, I could do the other one for, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just like, damn, this is crazy how this can work out. I'm like, I'm, I would be the only artist in the game that's, you know, managed by one and deal with uh, with the two biggest hip hop <laughs> guys in the game. You know what I'm saying? From Buffalo. I'm like, this shit is next level. And I could put Conway and Benny on. Yeah. And we just going to take this shit over. Did you know they have saying? any thoughts on this? Mm -mm. Nothing. Mm -mm. Thing was, you know, Marshall was Conway's favorite rapper. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like. You know, I was looking at a lot of shit like, you know, our story better than Marshall's and 50s. And they both got movies, so. <laughs> <laughs> our shit would be crazy. Yeah. Like, that's how I was just looking at things like, okay, yo, if they invest in us like they invested in it to them too, this shit would be legendary. Because just the story alone of what we've been through and, and just like really getting deep into it. It'll be one of the illest stories in hip hop. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I mean, listen, like, just the Instagram picture alone, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like it, it'll be nuts. So I was just like, you know, let's let's go this route. And Conway, he like I said, it, you know, he he fucked with Marshall the long way, and I was just thinking like, okay, well, I I I do the label deal with them and still just get managed by Rock Nation. Yeah, when the time is right. Yeah, and it it, it happened when it happened, but. I went into it now with a different situation. I'm going over there with my guys, which is Hop and Chase. Yeah. Which was like, you know, because for the longest, even after the Shady deal, you see it was two years later, I ended up doing the Rock Nation deal. Right. So yeah. For them told two years, I was still managing myself. And um, but Did I, that ever feel like a lot for you during those two years? Nah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was a challenge. Because it just showed me like this the steps, the progress. Like I like seeing like, oh shit, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. All right, this person co-signing, this person fucking with us. Oh shit, we making songs with this person. I like, it was just like me leveling up. Like I could see it personally because this was the shit that I was doing personally. Yeah. You know what I mean? Barely sleeping, traveling, not being there for my family, doing everything. Like it's it's stressful on that end. That's the only thing that bothered me is, is, is not being with my family. Mm -hmm. You know, thank God for iPhones and shit like that now where I can see him anytime I want to. You know, my son just turned three months yesterday. You know what I'm saying? I haven't, since he's been alive in three months, I haven't been with him for a week straight yet. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, that shit gets stressful, but I got to do what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm making those sacrifices now. If a motherfucker go to the army and got to, <laughs> you know what I mean, go out the country for six months to a year, it's like the shit you just got to do. You know what yep. I'm saying? But, you know, my daughter Pootie, she she older now, she's six. So she understand. Like she she one of my biggest fans. So mm. she know what I gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Even at that young age, cause we just teach her that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, it's not that I don't wanna be there. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm I'm just making a sacrifice for us, you know what I mean? And um, you know, it's you know, my, my kid's mom said she she hold it down, you know what I'm saying? Hold yeah. it, I couldn't ask for a better a better supporter, a better partner. You shout out to saying? her. Yeah, shout out to her. 100%. So you're, um, you know, you you grew up with, uh, like man, on your own. You know, yeah. you, you were you were the man. Yeah. Um, yeah. but now you got a whole bunch of people who are tenured in this business who are OGs and and mentors to you, right? Mm -hmm. Hop, Chase. Mm -hmm. We saw Bar was just up in uh, in Buffalo with you. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, a Paul, like a lot of older, you know, guys who can look out, what do you rely on them for? Um, I mean, of course, you know, I don't know everything. You know I mean, I like to, I like to learn something every day. I always say just build with the builders. Like those are builders, you know what I'm saying, of the culture, of the industry. So like I surrounded myself by that. You know, even when it came, like I said, with the whole Rock Nation situation, I had already approached Hop a couple times on management. In them two years where I didn't have management. Wait, you wanted Hop to be your manager? Yeah, just Hop. You know what I'm saying? The the most like he's a unicorn. He's a unicorn. You'll yeah. never see him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but he is a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> Still to this day, even when we do business right now, he's a fucking unicorn. <laughs> it's it's great though because like when you don't think that he'll show up, he just like pops up and you're just like, I didn't even know you were. He's like, oh yeah, I've been here for three weeks, and it's yeah. like, what? No, no seriously, it's, <laughs> yeah. he's like that. Yeah, he's like that. But you know, that's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's different. Everybody moved different. But one thing for sure, if I call Hoppy picking up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's all that matter. Yeah. You know what I'm that's how, fair. How he yeah. move is how he move. But if I need him, he's there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's that's what's important. And, and I understand how he is. Even us getting going into business together, you have to already know that. You yeah. understand that. Or it'll drive you crazy. Because you be like, oh, this is my manager and I don't even see him. Or, no, it's not like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, when you tag them in to do something, mm-hmm. it's getting done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's you know that's and he built that relationship with everybody he needs to. So it's like it's a mutual respect for Hop. You mm-hmm. know what I mean, mm-hmm. you know, Hop is a big part of the culture. So, you know, when I was asking him, he was just like, "Nah, I don't want to. I don't want to manage right <laughs> now." Da, da, da. I'm like, "All right, cool." You know what I'm saying? And um, I kept grinding, and my 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 focus was on pushing Benny, like making Benny the biggest thing biggest thing like just grinding doing what we gotta do we did Tana Talk 3 y'all produced by Derringer and Alchemist which is a classic and I'm like yo this is this tape right here is gonna take shit to another level and of course I already I'm still cool with Law mm-hmm. and Marie everybody said like Rock Nation anyway so they fans so when Tana Talk 3 came out they listening to this shit you know what I'm saying and they like Damn, this shit fucking crazy. Which I knew it was. I knew the res- what the response was gonna be from that project, and um, kind of find out, you know, Hove just start playing it a lot. Like that was like his favorite thing to play. He just start playing us, and then you know I did Supreme Blind Tell. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that was like on his, you know, I had a song that was on his top twenty list of the year and all of that shit, and um, it was just like. They rec- people recognize it, you know what I'm saying? And you know, before that was my that was another thing too, with the Rock Nation situation, is I didn't know Hove. You see what I'm saying? It mm-hmm. was like, yeah, how I'm gonna do this? And I don't <laughs> even know Hove. You know what I'm saying? Like I know everybody else, but it's like that's that's who I really need to know, and I didn't know. And um, it was like now, you know. I knew he listened to the music. I know he knew the words. I know he, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I could talk to, um, you know, Emery. He'd be like, yo, man. Like, Emery would call me. Like, I'm at Hove House right now. I just walked in the house. He playing, y'all. Mm. Like, shit like that. I'm like, okay, this shit getting real now. Now now <laughs> the big homie is, he's investing time into playing it. Then once I found out, like, you know, you know, we were becoming his favorites, it was just like... It's time to make some moves, but what happened was Hop ended up reaching out to me, and um, it, it, it's it's it, everything happened organic, you know what I'm saying? Benny hit me one day and was like, "Yo, I want to be Rock Nation," and um, I'm like, "Say less," you know what I'm saying? Like we gonna make that happen because the thing was, even if I didn't go to Rock Nation, mm-hmm. I'm I'm, t- I'm so tied in with all of them, and they already had Ben gave me that opportunity. I'm like Benny on fucking fire. Mm-hmm. We let's just see how it'll work with Benny. You know what I'm saying? Like let him. This is where he want to be anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, let's 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 figure it out. Make sure the right people. You know what I mean? Like we we all on the same page with what we're going to try to do with Benny. Mm-hmm. So, right after he told me that, and I was about to you know start making calls anyway, Hop hit me <laughs> and was like, "Yo, I just got off the phone with the big homie." No, he was at his house. He was at whole <laughs> house or some shit. He left. It was like, yeah, I was just over there. Man. That's, that's all he was talking about. Like, yo, man, I, you know, I, man, I want to work with these dudes. I want to work with these dudes. And you know what I'm saying? I'm a big fan and all of that. It was just like, and I just, 
I just felt that was respect. Mm -hmm. Like hearing them words was like, uh, he respected this shit. Like this is what I've been wanting. Like even in, if I knew he felt like that two years ago, it would have probably happened two years ago. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because you know, this was from other me just talking to everybody else. It was never him or yeah. hearing it from him. But now it was like, oh shit, like this is, every time I talk to somebody, they, they saying like, whole oh, reaching out. Mm. And um, I'm like, yo, this might be the opportunity. So when he hit me, he was like, yeah, I just left his house. And he like, yo, you know what I mean? I've been wanting these dudes. We need to make something happen. And then um, Hop was like, shit, I'm thinking about coming back in the game. You know what I'm saying? If I come back in the game, you know, um, I'm just gonna manage y'all. Like this isn't for me to do a whole bunch of people. He was like the only other people that I even would consider was Ross. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know him mm -hmm. and Ross is is close. Like yep. That. So he was just like it would just be y'all and Ross. And I'm like, well, shit, they got the dream team. <laughs> like, shit, you know, I, I love Ross. Shit, you know what I'm saying? So it was just like, yo, you got the dream team. Everything organic. We already homies. We already cool. I already know what you can do. I already know who you connected with, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, okay, so if, you know, you start managing, is it going to be just yourself or is it going to be the Rock Nation deal? Like, how that's going to work? And I'm like, you know, the, the smartest thing would be to lock it all up with Rock Nation. Benny want to go there anyway. Yep. You already, you know what I mean? Hove talking to you already. Mm -hmm. So if you come back into the game, you might as well just link up with Rock Nation too. And he was just like... Yeah, you right, you know what I'm hmm. saying? I mean, yeah, we let's let's figure all this out. So then we just kept building and building. And then um, when I talked to him, I'm like, what's going on, man? What we <laughs> doing? You know what I'm saying? He was just like, yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a, um, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm working on everything. I just want to get, you know, one more person involved. You know, before I used to have G, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. with him. So I guess, you know, you know, sometimes people work like that, like, get two strong people that can just do the best of what they do or come together and just, you know, make history. So I guess he was just looking for like another G. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, cause you, like we say, you're a unicorn. So it's like, yeah. I mean, you could do a lot behind the scenes, but who's going to be the day-to-day -day guy that's going to get dirty now? Yeah. yeah. Hop, Hop isn't the dirty guy. Yeah. <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? Hop is the, I can make the phone call. I can make any phone call happen. You know what I mean? Like, what's just what's the plan? Let's work on it. Let's do it. But it still got to be somebody out there with me every day that's mm -hmm. getting dirty. So he needed the dirty guy. And um, and then I got that phone call. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am. Yeah. I know. I, it was crazy because me and Chase was real. You know, we was real close. We were just homies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um. I, when Hop hit me Like when we talked that day And he was like I need a person I had just got off the phone With Chase Like literally hmm. Like literally Like I talked to Chase Then talked to Hop And when Hop told me that Remind you When Hop called me I told Chase I'd call him back yeah. Cause that's who I was talking to yeah. You know what I'm saying So I'm like Yo let me call you right back Just Hop You know what I'm saying so I'm talking to Hop, and I'm like, yo, what is we doing? What are we going to do? Whoa, 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 whoa. But he was like, yeah, no, everything good, man. You know what I'm saying? I've been talking to the big homie. I just want to get a partner. You're going to figure this out. Da, 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 da. Man, it's nothing. You know, I'm just checking in. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, so shit, like, what kind of person you need? Like, what's the qualifications? Because I might know a few people. You know what I'm saying? And he was just like, nah, you know, I just need somebody. I'm like, say less. Hold on, let me call you right back. I call Chase. Right <laughs> like, yo, Chase, look. Man, this we got we got an opportunity to just do something crazy right now. You know what I'm saying? Rock Nation involved, you know, the big homie involved. And I'm like, yo, hop, you know what I mean? We've been speaking on management, but he need a partner. We could man, we could really do some crazy dope shit. You already know who we you know, what we bring into the table, what I've already done on my own. So just imagine with hop, with you, we all to say together with the big homie, this shit'd be crazy. He was just like, man, hop my brother. Whatever hop wanna mm -hmm. do, let's do that shit. Like, man, you you, you <laughs> it's not like it's you know what I mean, something that yeah. I want. Like this is this, It's not foreign. It's, it's yeah, 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 right. It's yeah. actually perfect. So I'm like, I'll call you right back. And I hit <laughs> hop again. 
By the way, you guys do have like call conferencing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, you know I don't like. I didn't want to put nobody on the show. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Literally the same. Just feels like a lot of phone calls. <laughs> same day, all this really happened in the same day. You could start like a Google Doc. Yeah. <laughs> so I just I hit hot back and was like, "Yo, I just talked to Chase, man. How you ever, how you feel about Chase?" He's like, "Man, Chase is my brother." I'm like, "Man." This is it. Yeah. This is it. This is how shit happens organically. How it just so you know what I mean? I'm like, yo, this is perfect. And I trust y'all two guys. And y'all already know me before this shit. Before we do business. Like you know how I give it up, how I feel, you know what I'm saying? And and how you know how I move. So it was just like, let's come together and do this. So then they end up, you know what I mean? He in the he was like, I'm gonna call Chase now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And I'm like, all right, after you talk to him, call me back. Like, he just kept going back and forth all fucking day. You know what I'm saying? So he hit up Chase. Chase was down. And it was like, yo, we about to come together. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and start Agent 78 together. And then we just, you know, link with the big homie, make it a Rock Nation situation. And now, like I said, I'm coming in there to Rock Nation with my own guys. Mm -hmm. So it's like, these are the people I already respected, trusted was friends look you know what I mean consider like family so it's just like now I'm at Rock Nation like this is the better feeling going into it of me even you know uh being who I am now from two years ago it was yeah like, you know just West Side Gun now is just a totally different artist so it was like okay you get the West Side Gun now plus I got Chase and Hop Let's do what we do. And, you know, hold behind 100%. It's not one time I ever reached out to him, and he didn't. It was instant. That's perfect. Yeah, I don't, there's no middleman yeah. between me and him. Yeah. yeah. It's just me hitting him. Well, listen, congratulations on your whole journey. Thank congratulations you, um, on your upcoming project. And and congratulations on a, on a trip that's, you know, it's, it's like driving that Saturn, you know? Like, you, you, dro <laughs> you drove a long way. You spun out maybe a little bit, hydroplaned. You got pulled over. You got out of it and you landed all right, you know? And uh, I think there's just bigger and better things on the way. And it's still the beginning. Yeah. It's still the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when it when it comes to fashion, I got a lot of collabs coming up, doing a lot of shit in the art world. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got the wrestling. You know what I mean? Benny on fucking fire. Conway on fucking fire. We haven't even dropped the major releases yet. Those is about to start dropping. Uh, starting next month, you know, Black Friday, we got What Was Sheen Gonna Do? That's coming out on Shady. Mm -hmm. You know, Conway's solo album is done. I'm about to make my solo album in November. So I told him I handed my solo album December 1st. So, where are you going to record that? At home. That's it. I, don't, I record everything at home. You know what I'm saying? I don't need the big ass fancy board and all that old extra <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Just give me an ounce of the best. Some champagne. And maybe a French Montana feature. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, thanks so much for coming through. We really appreciate it. No doubt. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this new episode of A Waste Time with It's The Real. Jeff, people want to find out more about us. I'm Eric with the curly hair. You're Jeff with the glasses. Together, we are It's The Real. No apostrophe. No spaces. If people want to find out more about this podcast, it's called A Waste of Time with It's The Real. Jeff, if people want to find out more about what's going on with us, where can they Go. You can always go, always, to itthrill.com. I-T-S-T-H-E-R-E-A-L dot com. Go sign up for our newsletter. Newsletter season? It's always newsletter season. Button up. Is it newsletter time? It, you want to know what? I think it is. There's a newsletter coming this week. Yes. Check your inboxes this week. This week? All right. It'll go. be there. Yeah. It might be an old one. I might just re-forward it. <laughs> There should be a newsletter coming to your inbox this week. You can also go to itsthereal.com slash shop. Go get some 40% off shirts. And by that, I do not mean that they are cut off at the nipples. <laughs> should you want to listen to all of our old episodes and our new ones, you can go to any streaming platform, including the one you are currently listening to right now, right here, right now. I'm talking about Spotify, Apple, Google Play, CastBox. YouTube, 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 YouTube.com slash It's The Real. You can also go and find us on social media at It's The Real on Twitter, at It's The Real on Instagram, and those are the only two.
two social networks that matter. Jeff, now is the time of the podcast where we like to shout people out. And today I wanted to get a little creative. I asked the people out there on the internet, I said, hey, hey, if you want to be shouted out, please give us your best professional wrestling name. And the people came through. I'm talking about the mongoose. The mongoose. That is our friend B. Vega down in Florida. He said I'd have one ringside like Jake the Snake. The finisher, by the way, would be an arm bar type submission. I don't know what that means. I want to shout out the African American Dragon. That's Byron Young, 24. Shout out to Dick Wolf. That's straight razor fresh. Okay, so I, I fuck with the name Dick Wolf only because yeah, it would have a bong bong. <laughs> as, his, as his entrance music? Yeah. Shout out to Atmosphere. That's Atmos, A-T-M-O-S, capital F-E-A-R. It's Atmosphere. really a name that really only works if, like, red. <laughs> like, it's, it's not a name like, oh, man, it's the Atmosphere. That's how, although, that being said, Atmosphere is pretty scary. Atmosphere is everywhere, Global Jeff. warming is, right. a, is a real thing. That's Alan Vaughn. Shout out to Southside Johnny. That's A Breezy. How about, this is one of my favorites, the Wawa Warrior. John Sparks. Yes. Who is That's from... That's our guy. Yeah, he's from uh, Tom's River, New Jersey. So he shops at Wawa. He, he loves the, the Wawa, Wawa Warrior. Yeah. Th- I, that is, I think, very, very him. Yeah, but it also sounds like a speech impediment. Oh, my God. <laughs> like a Wawa Warrior. <laughs> it's a Wawa Warrior. Shout out to Travis Brutus. The Beefcake. So that's like a play on the Ohio State mascot because our guy, Trav Dave, is from OH. I O. There we go. How about uh, our guy, Shake Skates, goes by, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, it's Louis Vice, aka Park Hive Stronger Than Beehive, aka Goose Sheets, aka Clan Ad Top 3. Okay, okay, now here's the thing. And then he said, aka Not For Real For Real. Don't promote the Joe Button podcast on our podcast. No, not on this platform. But I mean, like, listen, like, shouts to all of them. How about our girl Lexi? Mm-hmm. Lex or Todd? So yeah, I'm but, guessing but she's, she's, she's Lex. She's Lex, not Todd. Lex or Todd. But I guess that Todd, I don't know if they would have, if, if Todd would approve this. Why not? She said, Lexi said her name should be Benny's Bitch. Yeah, well, you know, that's Lexi's business, not Todd's. Yeah. Shout out to the Grandmaster JRS1. That's JW, the dude. Our guy, King Gage, down there in Miami, earlier had the professional wrestling name, The Black Warrior. He came back with a different one. Mm -hmm. The Cobra Clutch God. It's okay. All right. (laughs) Um, Listen, I'm not trying to shit on everybody, but like, Daniel. You have a high, you have a high, I have a high high bar. bar. Just like, that's my, that's my uh, finishing move. The The high high bar. bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Daniel David, Albu Calves out in London Town. Said Daniel, the hot stepper David. I like that. He would come out to any Kamozi, the hot stepper. Uh, you know what? It's a full, like, plan. Yeah, I'm I, with it. I like people who have full fleshed out characters. Yeah. Full fleshed out character, by the way, was my nickname in high school. <laughs> the Wylan Shaolin Ferryman. And th- so that's our friend, Kit that's Future. Sean. Yeah. He is from Staten Island. They have a ferry. This is the whole thing. And, and they have the Shaolin. Yeah, so there you go. How about I don't know if they have the willing? How about how about our a guy? How about our guy, cousin Lou? Cousin Lou. Okay, he's from LA, mm-hmm. so it's a whole theme here. Mm-hmm. LA. He. So it's Latin he. Yeah. But AKA it's big Cholula. Yeah, but every but all the LAs are LA. Yeah. Again, these Too are much? these these things are better written out. <laughs> I don't think the announcer would have an easy time with us. Jeff, I, I just want to take a second. To go back to Abu Kals for a second. Yeah. Our guy Daniel David. Because he has been promising his mom that she would get a shout out at some point. And we don't want to make him look like a liar. Are we talking about the hot stepper, Daniel David? That's the one. But but really, we're talking about his mother, Paloma. Mm -hmm. The great lady that she is deserves a great shout out. So here it is. Here comes the outstep of Paloma. <laughs> She's a lyrical gangster, Paloma. <laughs> Excuse a- me, Mr. Officer, Paloma. <laughs> Shout out to... Still looking like that, Paloma. <laughs> Shout out to Wreck4222. Because he goes by. Tyrannosaurus Wreck. See, now that's a good one. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. Uh, Devin No One Cares. Yeah. What's his name? Gentleman Desperado. <laughs> It sounds like Mitt Romney's made up. <laughs> I know, yeah, his, his Twitter, Twitter account. 
uh, Smash Lames is Argus, Orion, or Malibu Pippin, or Cashmere Cheddar, or or Smash Lames. Smash Lames. It's really good. I really I fuck with all those. Jeff, do you have one for yourself? Yes, Black Warrior. Black, the Black Warrior. Jeff's a big wrestle head. Get us home from Atlanta, as always, guys. Not for real, for real. Sure, sure. We'll see you guys next week. Grrr.